What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today we are going to be talking about a new feature in Emacs 27 called Tab Bar Mode. So uh, Tab Bar Mode is, uh, is a very interesting feature that allows you to basically create workspaces inside of Emacs. And if you don't really know what a workspace is, um, maybe you've used a a desktop environment like GNOME or KDE that um, gives you the ability to separate the different windows you have open into different workspaces so you can switch between them. So maybe there's some hotkey you have that allows you to switch to uh, another workspace that has a different set of windows that are currently open. Well, in Emacs, there is the possibility of doing a very similar thing where you can have different workspaces that have their own window configurations that you can switch between. And uh, there's a UI that makes that very convenient. Um, now, whenever you hear the word tab, you're probably thinking something, something like a file tab inside of a normal or quote unquote normal text editor where uh, each file has its own tab and you can switch between the tabs. Well, in tab line mode, it's not exact, or sorry, in tab bar mode, it's not exactly the same thing because you can switch buffers inside of a given tab and you can also split the window inside of a given tab and then have different tabs that have different buffers, different uh, window configurations. Now there is a feature called tab line mode that is also in Emacs, which provides something more like what you would expect to see in, in another text editor um, for you, where you have tabs per buffer. So if you'd like to have a tab per, per buffer approach, you can definitely check out tab line mode. But in this video, we're gonna talk about tab bar mode, which provides a more broad functionality that gives you a lot more flexibility in my opinion. So um, let's talk a, a little bit about like how it could possibly be used. So let me just pull up my notes here on the screen and we'll talk about it. So uh, first of all, how is it useful? Um, well, you can separate uh, workspaces for different tasks. So imagine if you're working on a project and you wanna have a setup where you have like maybe a, a code uh, window and then maybe like a, uh, a test output window or a window for your shell, your terminal. And then maybe you wanna have another workspace for showing your org mode files. Like you have your org agenda and maybe a notes file for things you're working on that day. Um, tab bar mode gives you the ability to separate those two things into different workspaces so you can switch between them easily. Uh, it's also great for things like, you know, if you want to have your, your ERC buffers for like, you know, chatting on IRC or maybe some other chat uh, plugin for Emacs in a separate window or in a separate uh, tab or workspace. Uh, also, you can use it in EXWM as well. So if you use EXWM for managing program windows inside of Emacs, you can just do the same thing. You can have a separate tab or separate workspace for things that are there. So uh, it can be a very effective way to uh, manage the things that you have open and also to sort of customize your workflow and how you interact with windows and buffers inside of uh, inside of Emacs. So let's go through the basic usage of, of tab bar mode and sort of talk about some of the com commands that come with it and how you can use them. Uh, so first of all, if you want to see the actual tabs that are referenced by the name tab bar mode, then all you need to do is just use uh, meta X and run tab bar mode, tab bar mode. And now you'll see that I have a tab at the top of the screen, which says emacs tab bar .org. So by default, um, the new tab is going to have whatever the name of the buffer that you're looking at is uh, whenever you start up a new tab. Uh, now I could start another tab by running the tab new command. Uh, that's also bound by default in Emacs to the Control X T2 binding. And if you look in the Control X T prefix, if you use which key or something like that, you'll see that there are a few other commands that are bound there, which we'll talk about in a moment. So now we see that we have two tabs open. And right now it looks like what you would expect to see whenever you are using tabs in a normal, quote unquote, normal editor, where you have one file per tab. However, where things get interesting is when you start uh, splitting. Uh, windows. So if you saw the previous video I did on uh, creating and managing multiple windows in Emacs, then you'll know that there are key bindings for splitting your um, your screen into multiple windows. So if I switch back to the previous tab and then back again to the Emacs tabbar.org, just by clicking on the tabs above, you'll see that the window configurations are saved. So now I have the ability to switch back and forth between those. 
So um, there's also key bindings you can use to switch between them as well. Uh, there's a command called tab next. So if I run tab next right now, it should wrap back around to that first tab. Right now, you can tell that it's very difficult to see which one is actually selected because the uh, the colors are not very um, prominent, I guess. But that's a, something you can configure. So if I run, um, let's see, it's uh, control X T uh, O, the letter O. So control X T O. That is sort of the default key binding for uh, switching tabs or to the next tab. If you're using evil mode, there's a very convenient binding for that, which is G T. So if you if press G, then you'll see there is the T binding here that goes tab bar switch to next tab. So you can just keep hitting G T all day. You can also hit <clears throat> G uh, capital T to go backwards. So let's say I create another new tab, tab new. So I have three tabs open now. Let's switch to a different buffer in this one just to sort of show uh, some things. Also, you'll notice that whenever I update the, the primary buffer inside of the tab, so the primary window inside of the tab, it does change the title of the tab to match that. So uh, now I can use a G uh, capital T to go backwards and then GT to go forward. So that's a very convenient binding if you want to have something that's already built in if you do uh, use evil mode. However, I would recommend if you don't use evil mode or you just want to have that binding like really close at hand, definitely rebind it to something that's convenient for you because it will save you a lot of time. Um, so also, since uh, these tabs are automatically named to something, you can um, rename it as well. You can name it a tab whatever you want. So let's say um, I want one of these tabs to be for my org mode files. I can actually go open one of the org files for, that we've been working on in previous um, video in this series or the Emacs from scratch series. <clears throat> if I open my org files, let's open up the, uh, let's say <clears throat> journal.org and we will just ignore that part. All right, <clears throat> so now I have this journal.org. I'm gonna use the tab rename command and that's bound to control X T R, I believe. Now it says new name for the tab. So if you leave it blank and press enter, it will do automatic naming. But if you set a name, like let's say org, then now your uh, tab will be named org. So if you want to you know, have a consistent name for your tabs, then you can go rename them. There's also a function that you can uh, override called, let's see, uh, tab mode uh, name. Okay, <clears throat> not to look that up. So let's look back at this file. It is it's tab bar tab name function, which is a bit of a mouthful, but uh, if you look that up with control HV tab bar tab name function, you can customize this to be whatever you want it to be. Uh, so basically, it's just a function that gets called with no arguments, I believe, and then you just return a string. So you can make it be whatever you want. And if you wanted to, you could uh, read from the mini buffer to ask the user at the time of creation of the tab <clears throat> what the name should be. So um, that's renaming. But what if you want to also close a tab? Like, let's say we're finished with this scratch tab. Um, there is a tab close command, which is control X T zero. So if I run that uh, control X T zero, it will close this tab. But also maybe you decide that you close the tab by mistake and you want to get it back. There's also a function for that. There's tab bar undo close tab, which you have to run by itself, I think. Bar undo close tab. There's no default binding for that. So if you run that, then it will pop open that uh, tab that you had there. And I believe that there is um, like a history for this as well. So if you have multiple tabs that you've closed, they will come back. So let's just close both these by clicking the button in the tab. And then let's run the tab bar undo close tab and then both of them will come back so it can be helpful if you happen to close one by accident or you just decide that you didn't want to close it after all uh let's see what else we have <clears throat> so also you can move the tabs around so maybe if you're using like gt or gt capital t or just the the tab move or sorry the uh tab next command often and you want to have them or organized in a certain order so it's easier to navigate between them you can use the tab move command uh, by default, if you just run tab move interactively, I believe it just moves it to the right. So that it move that emacs tab bar org to the right. And I think if you run it at the end, it, it wraps back around to the beginning. Uh, also, you can use a numeric prefix to say how many spaces you want it to move. So if I were to use uh, the control U for the universal argument, or uh, you may have it rebound to something else. In my case, I have a control alt U. So if you use control alt U, Ah, I think it's doing something different in this case. Let me turn off uh, that mode real quick. Okay, so control U, I'm gonna say two, 
And then I'm gonna use the uh, tab move, or sorry, the tab next command. So in this case, it's control X T, and then uh, it, oh, O for next. So now since I do that, it is, oh, I just did tab next, not tab move. Let's do tab move. Uh, tab move also use, uses a uh, numeric prefix as well. So uh, control U, two, control X, T, and then I believe it's M for move. It will move it over two spaces. So uh, that also works with negative. So if you want to move it back to the left, basically by one space, you can do control U, negative one, uh, control X, T, M, and then it will move back to the, uh, to the left. Now, obviously that is, very long key binding to to want to move a window around or move a, a tab around so uh you can also bind the let's see you, you could probably bind a function to it to say you know which direction you want it to move i would say if you if you're going to be doing move, movement of tabs a lot you probably do want to uh, have your own custom function that that you can bind to a key to do that for you so uh, it's just something to keep in mind but if you have very basic usage of the uh, the tab functionality, then you could just use the normal tab move or tab next, etc. Okay, so also um, you can do fuzzy matching of the tab names by using the tab bar select by name command. Uh, by default, that is bound to Control X T return, and now you'll see that I get a completion buffer at the bottom in the echo area. It says switch the tab by name. It excludes the name of the tab that we're currently in, so I can just you know use whichever one I want. I can type org to get to org, press enter, and it switches to the org tab. So if you have uh, many tabs open, uh, because you have a few different projects work you're working on, you wanna switch between them very quickly, then you can do that. That's a pretty good option. So now, um, let's see. So I had mentioned that there is the tab bar tab name function that you can configure, but there's a couple other things that you can configure as well. So uh, as you can tell by default, if you do tab new, it will create a new tab, but it will basically copy over the current uh, buffer, I believe. Let's see if it copies the window configuration. So if I do tab new whenever I've, I've already split the windows, let's see what tab new does. So yeah, it doesn't actually uh, copy the window configuration, but it will copy whatever the current buffer is. So if I change this buffer to something else, like let's say uh, emacs.org, then I, cr I use tab new to create a new tab. It's going to create a new tab with the file that I currently have selected, uh, irrespective of the window configuration. So you can, you can customize this behavior so that it will choose a specific buffer every time that you um, create a new tab instead of just picking one uh, by default. So if we look at the uh, tab bar new tab choice variable tab bar new tab choice um, says it defines what to show in a new tab so if it's t start a new tab with the current buffer uh, otherwise if the value is a string use it as a buffer name to switch to it if such buffer exists or switch to a buffer visiting the file or directory that the string specifies so it can either be a buffer name or a file name so one thing we can try to do is use set q tab bar new tab choice and then set it to the scratch buffer so that it always goes to scratch whenever we create a new tab. So if I do that and then I use tab new, then the default buffer will be the scratch buffer. So if you use something like the Emacs dashboard or some other sort of landing page uh, package, uh, you can set that as the buffer that it goes to automatically whenever you create a new tab. So it's easy to like load a project or do whatever you want to do. You could also set it to like a specific org file if you wanted to. So that's a pretty useful thing to do, to do if you use this a lot. Um, also, um, there is the tab bar new tab two variable, tab bar new tab two. And this dictates uh, where new buffers get placed whenever you create, sorry, new tabs get placed whenever you create tabs. So um, there are four values here. Um, there's leftmost, left, right, and rightmost. So if you want the Right now, by default, the value is right. So whenever you create a new tab, it's gonna create the tab to the right of the current tab. However, if you want it to create to add the tab to the very end every time, you can select rightmost. Uh, likewise, if you want the tab to be to the left of the current tab, you can use left. And if you want it to be to the very, very left, or very left, I guess if you're looking at this the way that you should be looking at it, um, then you use the leftmost value for this variable. And that will cause the tab to be at the very beginning. So depending on your workflow, how you use tabs, uh, this will be a very useful uh, variable to configure to get the right type of flow, especially if you're doing, you know, moving between tabs a lot, uh, like using the directional movement, like tab next, etc. 
So uh, one last thing we can talk about is configuring tab bar appearance. Um, there are a few variables for this. So like the tab bar sh close button show, like if you don't want to show, it's very difficult to see right now because my DPI is pretty high, but there is close buttons on every tab. And there's also a new button here. Uh, these two variables, tab bar close button show and tab bar new button show control whether those things are visible. So you can set those both to nil if you don't want the buttons to show up. Um, there's also this uh, tab bar button relief. Uh, I can't really see it here, but there's kind of like this uh, outline to the buttons. And you can also remove that, I believe, if you set this value to zero. Uh, and then if you want to customize the face of the uh, tab bar so that you can maybe change the font or change the color of the text, you can customize the tab bar face. And I think there's a couple other faces you can use for that as well. Uh, if we look at tab bar, there's tab bar tab, which I believe is the active tab. And then there's tab bar tab inactive, which is the inactive tab face. So you can change like the background color of the tab to be whatever you want or the foreground text, etc. So you have a lot of control over the appearance of these things uh, too, if you want to do that. And lastly, you can use the tab bar mode without showing the bar. Uh, if you set this tab bar show to nil, then uh, you can turn tab bar mode off and you can still use the tab bar command. So if we were to use control X T return, these tabs are still there. You just can't see the tab bar any anymore. So um, what this variable does is it tells the uh, the tab system that whenever you create a new tab, don't automatically open the, the tab bar mode because otherwise it will do that. So um, let's say if I do, I haven't set that variable yet. So if I do uh, tab new, it will automatically show the tab bar again. So if you never want it to show, what you need to do is evaluate this line to set it to nil. Then you can turn off tab bar mode, but you can still run tab new and it will create a new tab. It just won't show the tab bar anymore. So uh, if you want to get the name of the tab bar some other way, because um, as you might have noticed, when I have tab bar mode on, uh, do mode line, some mode lines will actually show you the name of the current tab, especially if it's named, it will show you the name of the tab. So like this uh, org tab has the org name in the mode line. If you turn off tab bar mode, that name goes away, but the names are still there. It's just a function that you have to use to get to that. So uh, if you want to do that, you can use the it's a little bit weird because it's not meant to be publicly used. However, there is the tab bar current tab. If I use control X E here, it gives me this output. Uh, current tab, tab name, or explicit name T, blah. Um, you can use a list get to grab that name. I've basically made a little helper function here that you can use to just grab that value if you want to. So if I run this function, it will tell me my current tab. Oh, yeah. If I run EFS uh, current tab name, then it will give me the, the uh, org uh, tab name. So uh, that's something to use if you want to have your own way to display the the current tab if you're not using tab bar mode turned on to show the tab bar so um hopefully this was helpful to tell you how you can use the tab bar mode uh, personally i think this is a pretty interesting feature uh, and it's really great that it's built into emacs 27 so that you can use it no matter what um, i'm going to try to come up with some interesting ways to use this with other packages in the future because i think that it has some really nice synergies with with things like maybe buffler or some other packages where you can have each tab have its own list of bu buffers that are visible etc so uh, we'll definitely do some follow-up videos on this for more uh, workflow tips all right um so lastly i just want to thank my um, github sponsors for sponsoring the creation of this video uh, if you're interested in sponsoring this content please go to github.com sponsor slash david will to learn more um and i think uh, uh we will continue making uh, some more short videos like this in the future so if you like this video just uh definitely click subscribe and hit the bell uh icon so that you get notified every time i upload a video like this um, so the, with that said, uh, thanks so much for watching and, uh, until next time, happy hacking. Thanks a lot.